Hi everyone, welcome to our video on practice problems for mass spectrometry. We have three problems for you today and um, hopefully these will provide an opportunity for you to apply what you've learned um, in lecture as well as in our previous video on the concepts and information about mass spec. So our first problem asks us that we have uh, an unknown substance with a molecular ion peak at mz is equal to 107 with a relative intensity of 100. The relative intensity of the m plus 1 peak is 8, and the relative intensity of the m plus 2 peak is 0.3. So what is the molecular formula? So the first thing that you should do is kind of take a look at the information that's provided and figure out what is important to know and what is uh, it telling you. So we know we have a molecular ion peak at mz is equal to 107. So this is our m here, actually. Um, our m. So we know our m over z of m is equal to 107. We know that the m plus 1 relative abundance is equal to 8. Uh, and this relative intensity here is 100. And then the relative intensity of m plus 1 is 8. And the relative intensity of the m plus 2 peak is 0 0.3. So I'm just going to put percentages here so we can kind of keep track of where all these things are. So this is the information that's given to us. So um, if you remember from lecture or from our previous videos, we talk about different types of rules and where you should start. So let's take a, st uh, let's take a look first at our um, m over z value for m, um, which is 107. And if you remember from the nitrogen rule, I'm just going to draw a little box around this. Um, if you remember from our nitrogen rule, uh, an odd number for m over z means that we have an odd number of nitrogens in our uh, unknown substances molecular formula. So that's the information we have so far from this, and this is what our uh, m can tell us. Let's look at our m plus 1 now. Um, if you remember, our m plus 1 gives us information about how much carbon or how many carbons are in the molecular formula. And the formula to solve for this is m plus 1 divided by 1.1%. And this gives us the approximate number of carbons. So let's go ahead and take the um, relative intensity of m plus 1, which is given to us. It's 8%. We're going to do 8% divided by 1.1. And that gives us a value of 7.3. So that means that we have um, probably either a C7 or a C8. So we can have either 7 or 8 carbons in our uh, molecular formula, but we're not quite sure yet, so we're going to keep going. The next thing we need to know is uh, whether we have things like chlorine, sulfur, or bromine present in our molecular formula. So that's what M plus 2 tells us here. And M plus 2, the relative intensity given is 0.3%. And if you remember, for S, we need 4% um, approximately. For chlorine, we need about 33%. And bromine, we need about 100%. So 0.3% doesn't really fall into any of these numbers here. Um, so we're going to actually say that there are none of these present in this molecular formula. So we have this information so far, and this is what we know. Okay, so let's go ahead and figure out um, what we are looking at here in terms of our m over z. So let's first take a look at C7. So let's say we have C7, or 7 carbons. This means that we need to have, um, let's figure out how much we need, uh, how much AMU we have left. Uh, to work with if we account for having 7 carbons. So we have 107 to work with minus 12, which is the atomic weight of carbon, times 7, which is equal to 84, this whole process. And that gives us a value of 23 AMU for oxygen, nitrogen, and hydrogen. Okay? Now let's take a look at C8, and let's see if we have possibly 8 carbons. So let's say we have 107 again, minus 12 times 8 gives us 107 minus 96, and that gives us 11 AMU left for oxygen, nitrogen, and hydrogen. All right, so from here we know that we can actually 
narrow down how many carbons we have because we know from our n rule that we need to have an odd number of nitrogens. So if you remember from the periodic table, the atomic weight for nitrogen is 14 AMU. And if we have seven carbons, we have 23 AMU left for oxygen, nitrogen, and hydrogen. And that works. That means that we potentially could have enough, we have enough AMU left for this nitrogen to be part of our formula. If we have eight carbons, however, we only have 11 AMU left to work with for oxygen, nitrogen, and hydrogen. And this actually is not enough because we know that the nitrogen has to have at least 14 AMU and 11 is way too little for that. So we know that our molecular formula does not have eight carbons in it because it doesn't have enough AMU left for this nitrogen that we know it must had, have because we have this N rule here that tells us we have an odd number of nitrogens. So we can cut out this carbon eight we know there's seven carbons in our molecular formula. So I'm going to go ahead and move on to the next slide. Um, it's going to show us a table. And this is basically going to help us figure out now how many uh, <clears throat> oxygens and hydrogens we can expect in our molecule. And the way we do this is we kind of vary the amount of oxygens that we would expect and kind of do trial and error to figure that out. So for N, we know our N needs to be an odd value because that's how many nitrogens we have. We have uh, the number of oxygens here and the formula here to tell us how many hydrogens we'd have left if we used these values for oxygen and nitrogen. So we know N is odd, so we're going to have, let's say, one nitrogen here. Let's say our molecule has zero oxygens. So, and remember, we have 23 AMU to work with, assuming that we have carbons, um, uh, seven carbons to work with. So, 23 minus the uh, mass of oxygen, which is 16, but since there's zero, we're going to go with the zero here, minus 14 for nitrogen gives us nine hydrogens, uh, nine, nine atomic mass units left for hydrogen. Uh, let's say we have one oxygen and maybe one nitrogen here, because we know we need to have an odd number. So we're going to do 23 minus 16 minus 14. And that's actually going to give us negative uh, 7 AMU left. And obviously, that's not possible. So we're going to cross this out here. So this is actually our likely formula here, where we have um, 9 AMU left for hydrogen. So since uh, the molecular, uh, the atomic weight of hydrogen is 1, we're just going to have 9 hydrogens in our formula. So that actually gives us a molecular formula of C7N1. H9. Okay? And a good way to check this is if you kind of multiply all these back together, you should get uh, a weight of 107. So we're going to go ahead and do that just to make sure. So 12 times 7 plus 14 plus 9 times 1 gives us 84 plus 14 plus 9. And that gives us 107. So that is the molecular formula of our unknown substance. For our next problem, it says an unknown substance has a molecular ion peak at m over z is equal to 74 with a relative intensity of 100. The m plus 1 peak has a relative intensity of 4.8 and the m plus 2 peak has a relative intensity of 0 0.08. So what is the molecular formula? All right, so let's go ahead and start again by writing the information that we do know. So for our m, we know that the m over z is equal to 74 with a relative intensity of 100. And just in general, you always want to make sure that the relative intensity of your M is 100. Um, usually it's given to you like this, um, and that's how you can solve the problem so a way that we do. Because um, then it could, otherwise it would make it hard to scale. Um, the next thing it says, M plus 1 peak has a relative, relative intensity of 4.8%. So I'm going to write that there. And then the M plus 2 has a relative intensity of 0.08%. This one was 100%. All right, so this is the information that we know. So we're going to go ahead and start by doing the same process that we did before. So we're going to, we're going to start with the N rule. So uh, our M over Z here is even, meaning that we have an even number of nitrogens. All right. And uh, our M plus 1 tells us that we have how many carbons to expect. So we have 4.8% divided by 1.1%, and that actually gives us a value of 4.36. 
which puts us somewhere between a C4 or C5 molecule, meaning we have either four or five carbons. We don't really know how many yet. And then the last value here, M plus two, tells us that we have um, actually no bromine, sulfur, or chlorine because none of the percentages that we would expect um, aligns with 0.08%. So now we need to figure out how many uh, carbons and um, how many carbons we have. So let's take a look at actually um, what the potential options are. So let's say we have um, four carbons to start off with. And we know we have 74 over as, as our m over z value. So we're going to do 74 minus 4 times 12. This is assuming we have four carbons. Oops. Um, and we're going to get a value of um, 26. Then we have C5. We're going to do 74 minus 5 times 12, which is equal to 14. All right. So um, now we can base off of our information about how many nitrogens we have. And we know we have an even number of nitrogens, which means we can have either zero nitrogens or two nitrogens. Um, we can't really say for sure how many carbons we have here yet, whether it's four or five, because potentially we could have no carbons or no nitrogens. So there's not really any process or anything more we can do at this point. So I'm going to take us to the next slide, and we're going to consider both here. So the first one we're going to consider is C4. And if you remember, with C4, we had 26 AMU left to work with for oxygen, nitrogen, and hydrogen, or the halogens. So let's start by varying the number of oxygens that we have. So let's say we have zero oxygens and maybe zero nitrogens, OK? So we're going to do 26 minus the weight of oxygen and nitrogen, which is 0, 0, 26. So that would actually give us a molecular formula of C4H26. And if you remember the H rule, 2C plus N plus 2, the max number of hydrogens that we can actually have um, with these numbers that we've plugged in here is actually 2 times 4, which is equal to 8, plus how many nitrogens, which is 0, plus 2, which is actually 10. So the max number of hydrogens that we can have and halogens that we can have is 10. But this is 26 here, and that actually exceeds the uh, H rule. So we this actually doesn't work out. So we're going to try a different value here. Again, we're going to have zero oxygens. Um, let's go with maybe two nitrogens this time. We're going to just keep testing out these values to see um, what we get. That's negative two, so that's not going to work. How about one and zero here? 26 minus 16 and zero is equal to 10. So that means we have something called C4H10O. Uh, so this is actually something that could work because, again, our max value here, well, let's see, two times um, C, which is equal to eight plus zero plus two. So yeah, our 10, if, if this, our 10, uh, 10 is our max value, so this actually works here. So this is a potential molecular formula. But again, we still have C5, so we want to make sure that it's not potentially a, a molecule that has five carbons in it. So let's go ahead and test it out and make sure. So again, we have 0, 0 here. 14 minus 0 minus 0 is equal to 14. So let's say we have C5H14. And let's make sure it fits our uh, H rule here. So C5 our 2C plus N plus 2, we have 2 times 5 plus 0 plus 2. So the max number of hydrogens and halogens we can have is actually 12. And this actually exceeds that. So again, this um, is not a molecular formula that could work because it exceeds and breaks our H rule. Let's go ahead and try one more here. 14 minus 16 minus 0, which is actually negative 2. And of course, this doesn't work either because we can't have a negative value of hydrogens when you have a carbon. Um, uh, you can't just have a carbon bonded to five carbons bonded to one oxygen without any hydrogens. So that doesn't make sense. So this actually is our final uh, molecular formula, C4H10O. Okay, so that's how you do it, kind of like a process of elimination, trial and error, to figure out what type of molecular formula you have.
And something to keep in mind is usually mass, spectrometry, uh, mass sp spectrometry is done with other processes like IR and um, um, NMR and things that we'll talk about later on. And this all together provides data for what the actual molecule can be. Um, so it's one way to figure it out. This last problem here asks us uh, to answer the following questions and determine whether they are true or false. So let's look at our molecules. We have two molecules, sucrose and benzyl alcohol, A and B here. And um, part A says that molecule A has a higher M over Z for M in its mass spectrum. So if you remember M over Z, M over Z represents the molecular uh, molecular um, weight of the molecule. So let's go ahead and see what the molecular weight of sucrose is compared to benzyl alcohol. And looking at the molecular formula, I don't really need to calculate anything actually because I can see that there's more carbons, hydrogens, and oxygens in sucrose than there are in benzyl alcohol, meaning that the M over Z of um, M for molecule A will actually indeed be greater than um, molecule B since this molecular formula has way more carbons, hydrogens, and oxygens, which equates to a higher molecular weight. So that's going to be true. Let's look at part B. The DBE of molecule B could potentially be 4. So here we have a molecule B. We have a benzene ring as well as a CH2 and an OH attached, so it's an alcohol, benzyl alcohol. So um, DBE, if you remember, helps us determine whether or not we have pi bonds or rings in our molecular structure. And if a DBE is approximately equal to 4, that means that um, we potentially could have a benzene ring. And so looking at the structure of benzyl alcohol, I can see that, in fact, there is a benzene ring right here. So this actually is also true. The last question here says that molecule B has a more intense M plus 1 peak in its mass spectrum. So um, for M plus 1, anything when you have uh, dealing with an M plus 1, you want to think about how many carbons are present in the molecule. And we look at our molecular formulas here, and you can already see how many carbons are present in each. There's 12 in sucrose and 7 in benzyl alcohol. So you would expect that the molecule that has more carbons would have a more intense M plus 1 peak because the carbon is what contributes to this M plus 1 uh, peak. So since there are actually less carbons in benzyl alcohol than in sucrose, um, you would expect that the M plus 1 peak of benzyl alcohol would have less intensity because it has less carbons compared to the sucrose. So this actually is false because it is staying the opposite. Okay. So less carbon means less intense M plus 1 peak in its mass spectrum. So those are the three practice problems. Thanks for listening, guys.